our work with God, there are basically three levels of our work with God. Number one is fellowship. This is when we become a part of God's family. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 9, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14 said, What fellowship does light have with darkness? Philippians 3 and verse 10, Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship. 1 John 1 and verse 7, the Bible says, But we know if we are in Christ, we have this fellowship with him. So the first level of our work with God is fellowship where we come into the same ship to become fellows are we following so when we give our life to christ that's the first foundation then we graduate to the second foundation we call friendship this is when we become passionate for god and his kingdom Isaiah 41 and verse 8 James 2 and verse 3 the Bible says and Abraham my friend so Abraham grew from a point of fellowship to a point of friendship so how do we know you are now a friend of, of God where you serve him unconditionally whether in good times or in bad times he still remains God Proverbs 17 and verse 17 the Bible says for the friend love it at all times and a brother is born for adversity. A friend loved at some times? No, all times. And a brother is born for adversity. So we know that we are now friends of God. When whether things go the way we wanted or didn't go the way we wanted, he still remains God in our life. Even if you slay me, all seems to delay me I will never let go I will never let go even if I'm lost at any point I will never let go I will never let go so you get to the point where like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego you can stand before kings and say even if the God I serve we choose not to answer now that he answered before I still choose to serve him at that point you have shifted from the first level of your work with God to a level of what? friendship then you move your worship from fellowship to friendship then from friendship to partnership Luke chapter 5 verse 7 and 10 1 Corinthians 3, 9, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 1 and John 10, 30. The Bible says we are co-laborers with Christ. So you move your worship from what? Friendship, from fellowship to what? Friendship. Then from friendship to what? Partnership. Partnership is when you begin to get involved in the course of God's agenda. You begin to sponsor his kingdom. If you can't give, you groan. If you can't groan, you go. Are we following? you do one of these three things you either come into the point of where you become a financial apostle to move first his cause, his agenda or you just stand in the place of prayer and begin to pray kingdom advancement prayer or you get into the work and then do the work yourself do we understand that? So why did you give your life to Christ in the first place? Because if you don't understand why you gave your life to Christ, then you will not understand how you take your worship or your work with God from one level to another. So the first reason why we give our life to Christ is because of friendship. We, we are looking for friendship. The Bible just told us in Proverbs 17 and verse 17 that a friend loveth at all times. We looked at our lives, the weaknesses, the challenges, and we know we couldn't help ourselves. We tried it all by human effort. The Bible said, but the law was a schoolmaster. Galatians to bring us to Christ. The Bible says that the law was weak in itself, such that it couldn't bring man to God. Are we following? So we went through all our strength, and we needed a friend who can stand in for us and take that place of our weakness take that place of our struggle that's why we give our life to Christ are we following John 15 and verse 13 the Bible says greater love had no man than this that a friend should lay down his life for what? another 
a friend should lay down his life give me the scripture please a friend should lay down his life for what another that's what jesus came to do he was willing to die for us as a friend so i knew i needed a friend that the scripture truly calls a friend one who could lay down his life for me and take my place second reason why we give our life to christ is because we needed a family we're looking for a family the bible says we have been adopted into the family of god galatians 4 verse 5 ephesians 1 5 romans 9 verse 4 and romans 8 15 and finally number three we were looking for fulfillment and we knew that the only fulfillment we have in life is the one that can be found in christ colossians 1 and verse 29 the bible says for christ in us the hope of glory are we following christ in us the hope of glory now when we understand this then we know that if a child wants to claim rights then he must first sit in the position of responsibilities the bible says in galatians chapter 4 follow me the bible says that as long as a child being heir to the throne remains a child he is not better than what a servant he is kept under two thoughts and governor to the time appointed right so the bible says a child though he be lord of all he be heirs but as long as he remains a child he's not better than what a servant okay wait so a child only understands rights a servant only understands what responsibilities so when we bring a child and a servant into one then we have a son so what the tutors and the god are to do is to make that child not to sit in the position of right that's what the bible tells us is in luke 15 about two sons the bible says a man had two sons and one came to the father and said give me the goods that falleth to me hear what the next verse said the bible says, and he divided it between them both not just for one but the younger son the problem was he understood right he was a child why the elder brother only understood servanthood didn't know his right he only understood responsibilities are we following tonight so that's why give me Jer jeremiah 6 and verse 16 that's why we need to study the ways of the fathers to see how they walked with god how they took their christian walk from one level to another that's why i had to explain all i was doing now so that you understand that as you claim rights you have responsibilities hear me every revelation that leaves absolute responsibility on god is useless are we following King, kingdom christianity is a covenant basis the bible says thus saith the lord stand in the ways and see and ask for the old parts where is the good way and walk daring and ye shall find rest for your souls but they said we will not walk daring jude 1 and verse 3 he said but contend for the faith that was once handed to the fathers if we don't wake up to this reality no wonder jude knew a time will come when they will say marriage is not between, between a man and a woman again but between two adults the Bible says when we begin to hear things like this, we go back to the faith that was once and dead to the saints. We look at it again and say, no, our fathers never told us like this. Are we following? This was not the template of Christianity. They left for us on the world. They never told us like this. Contend for what? The faith that was once and dead to the fathers. So very quickly, how did the fathers do business with God? very quickly number one they look to god as their helper they look to god as their helper jeremiah 17 the bible says, woe unto a man who puts his strength in the hands of flesh are we following tonight psalm 121 david said i look up to the hills from where my help cometh from my help coming from the Lord, the maker of heaven. Now listen, the problem the church have, I am beginning to see a template that is making people to feel that if you want survivor, if you want to, to you know, to amass status quo, success in the earthly system, then you must leave God. 
that's why one time you know the apostles i like the way jesus behaved one time he was being careful he, he taught people for three days right and the bible says and when he was done teaching them for three days he to the disciples give them something to eat and one of the disciples said master this is but a desert place how can we feed this multitude of people how do you want it to happen send them to the cities send them to the villages and jesus was being careful he knew that if they truly went to the city they will find food there but if he permits such a generation will arise to teach a doctrine that there are certain things you cannot get from god's presence he said no yeah give them something to eat that's why many are abandoned the faith they feel god can't undo certain things they say leave what is for god for god who told you he can address your academic situation who told you he can put his hand on your career who said so they looked to god for help even when it came to the midst of a business agenda a young man genesis 37 called joseph the bible jacob rather the bible says that he went to sleep and in the midst of his dream god gave him a secret that no mortal man could cheat him he said don't worry is that what laban said okay pick a streak and stripe put a stripe there put it where the animals mate and let's operate a mystery that men cannot understand you think laban was not smart enough to understand to say i allow you anyone that is that is spotted take it as your own he knew there was no possibility in that but with god all things are possible he knew that was his confidence that there is no way jacob will amount to anything is that what he want take all the spotted anyone that has spot just take them that's your own and the bible says and jesus said to them give them something here to eat because if we didn't see that you know we'll have come up with revelations in our days now that actually we saw in scripture wherefore when it comes to do with physical food you, you don't allow people to stay in church you tell them to go out from his presence to get it jesus said i won't allow a revelation to come up that i won't be there to defend and he asked them he said what little do you have they said we have just five loaves of bread and few fishes he said bring them to me the bible said and he asked them he says sit them down you know why if you are not seated you can't be fed only seated men can assess instruction if you are not seated you can't hear that's why you are struggling and it looks like god is nowhere to be found they can't help you no this man in situations like that they know how to look up to him wait until he he reveals the way out of situation see listen the bible says i saw something one time genesis 22 how that the bible says and when god said to abraham stay your hand don't kill the son look up the bible says and god said to abraham mm -hmm. i kept it around caught in the ticket the bible says and abraham looked up right and saw behind him your bible abraham looked up and saw behind him so by the time you begin to look up to god as your help you will see what men can see he looked up but he was seen behind is the mystery only god understands are we following are we getting blessed tonight they looked up to him as their helper the bible says, and when he told them to sit the bible says suddenly they sat on the green grass but wait i thought they said that was a desert place so the first miracle was that he turned it from being a desert to a fruitful land just by his instruction they sat on green grass and he took the loaves of bread and few fishes from them the bible says, and he looked up and he blessed them so what was he teaching us there about the life of the fathers that the way to multiply the little is to look up to god for help and release the blessings on that little you look up to him and say lord let your blessing rest number two they lived the life of rugged faith and understood patience hebrews 6 and verse 12 the bible says follow those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise listen listen if we want to get the bible 
we should ask for the old ways and walk therein. How can a man just finish putting offering in church and then lost all his sons? If some of you, you will change church, not even change church, you will change God. Say, how can I come? I've been in church and my life is not changing. Who said so? Who said so? He just gave to God. Not just that. Did you know the Bible says that he sacrificed for each of his tithe morning by morning for their sins? And yet God wasted every of his family. Are we getting blessed tonight? And yet, he said, I won't cause God. I trust him. I might not understand what he's doing, but I trust him. Listen, the just is configured to live by faith. That's our life. You will get to a point where you are taking steps you don't understand. It's the life. Faith is a lifestyle, not a statement. Are we following? The just shall live, for we walk by faith. Not we speak by faith. We walk by faith. It's our life. The Christian journey is from faith to faith. A life of rugged faith and patience. Like I always tell my children, if God gives you a word, die inside. He's true to his word. Some of you, that's why you are repeating classes in God. Just a little tumult here and there. Just a little circumstances, unpleasant situation. You have said terrible things to God. Just little discomfort. You say, Lord, where are you? Do you know how these men followed God? Do you know what it is for a man to wait at such old age and he kept in his priestly position? Zechariah, still serving God, barren. He still stayed in his office and assignment. He got discouraged and said, I will no longer come to church. Some of you, God can't write. You will have, because of one F, one semester, you say, I'll be going to church once in a while once a month now your result is coming once in a month are we together are we following challenge yourself and then put patience in your work with god you know the reason for patience is that god will do things at his time your timing are we following god will do things at his timing not your timing the bible says in ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11 he makes all things beautiful in its time. If it is not its time, it will not be beautiful. Number three, how the fathers did business with God. And so if you have a life of rugged faith, listen, one of the things you must work on is your mind. Are we following? Work on your mind. The Bible speaks in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. They say, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Proverbs 4 and verse 23. The Bible says, Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Get away from things, people, and statements that weakens your faith. Did, have you not read your Bible? Ephesians 6. The Bible says that you will take the shield of faith to quench the fairy debts. Statements, manipulations you want to put into your mind. And say, but check it like this now. Where is God? Can't, can't you see that this thing is not working? Check it like this. Look at it this way. Listen, the devil does not know anything in your mind. He doesn't put anything in your mind. It's what you send in there he works on. Are we following? So guide what you allow to your mind. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4, the Bible says, But that the God of this world has blindfolded your mind, that they will not see the light of God in the face of Jesus. The God of this world has what? Blindfolded their mind. Guard your mind. Get away from things that affect your faith. That weakens your faith. Get away from it. Are we following tonight? Number three, they walked the world. Daniel 11.32 The Bible says, they that do wickedly they that do wickedly against the covenant shall be utterly destroyed. But they that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do excellent. Not they that know about their God. Knowing about your God simply means you don't have a relationship with him. Knowing God is when you and the world is now one. You are now a walking episode. They walk the world. 
they knew the covenant of God's word and they stayed true to it the word taught them that to have more you have to keep but they saw from his word that it is more blessed to give than to receive they lived their life like that and God turned their story for good don't play smart around God when it comes to his word are we following it has the ability to make you what he talks about follow his word follow his principle follow his precepts are we together walk the word walk it the problem in the Christian faith is that we don't work out the systems and principles of the world word. we don't are we following Get for every of your situation every survivor you need in life there is a word for you in the world go there engage it if you do your part God will do his part the Bible says that with God all things are possible the little I know about English is that the word with is a conjunction meaning joining two things together so if God is here and I am here the Bible is saying me and him together all things engage his word that's what we have followed to this point his word engaging the principle of his word till he makes us what he talks about you don't follow the worldly systems of things and begin to bring in your logic into God's word and say I have to use my sense I have to use my brain no the bible say we are in this world but not part of it if you want to follow the worldly systems in their atmosphere they will defeat you you have to walk by a different set of rules do we understand that you walk by a higher level of information and knowledge to survive they walked god's word and engaged the covenant of his word they do what he says the bible says in exodus 22 he said if you serve me i will bless your bread and water you don't come to church sit down doing things and choose to serve God any way you want Job 36 and verse 11 he said if they serve me they will spend their years in plenty and prosperity I saw that in the world so what's my responsibility? serve him then who brings the prosperity and plenty? God but I have no right to ask for his plenty and prosperity if my service to him is questionable listen if I serve him the way you like I always say one statement and I will repeat it here today you can choose your God but you don't choose the way to serve him you can choose your God but you don't choose the way to serve him even if it's Shango you decide to serve he tells you his terms and conditions he tells you his mode of worship he tells you how you approach him the problem in the Christian faith is that we want to serve God on our own terms and conditions. They are modus operandi. It doesn't look like that. If you want to be a son, as you understand right, understand responsibility. Before you claim the rights of scriptures, have you fulfilled the responsibilities of scriptures? Are we together? Are we following tonight? Walk the word. Go back to the word. Sit with God's word and check what are your responsibilities as a child of in every family you are given responsibilities there is always something for you to do are we together number four they live the life of concentration and vows job 31 and verse 1 the bible says and job made a vow he said i made a covenant with my eyes never to look lustfully at a woman see listen what sustained the fathers of all the levels of consecration and vows they were things they vowed never to do they were places they vowed never to enter we are too casual with our christian work i can't remember how long i've watched movie last because if i watch the kind of movies you watch i won't see the way i see even if God is trying to put pictures in your mind now it's the movie that is appearing vows and consecration me and football we are five and six if I were five and five I remember my dad drove me from home three days out of us because I went to play ball I was the JJ of my area he warned me say, they say you used to go out you will not go out if I catch you go out and that day we had inter-street match not the other match can go so I looked at what he said I looked at the match 
So I plotted my grab and told them to shift the time. Well, you know, when the devil is on your matter, he will show you that he has been here over 6,000 years. So why they shifted the matter, I planned that before my prayer will come back from work is four. So I would have been done by then. I was the one with the house key. When I was done, I was happy we took the cup. Then I got into the house and saw the door mysteriously open. I knew that I'm between hell and heaven right now. How many of you have been in that kind of situation? You are looking at the door, you say, what happened here? You know you are, whether you are finished, you'll be finished, you can't even smell yourself. But when I gave my life to Christ, and I knew his callings on my life, I knew there were things I must be willing to let go. There were things I must be willing to, that's what validate the seriousness of my work with him. You can't be deciding to walk with God, and you hang around places you are not supposed to be seen. Why? Consecrations and vows. Be with God. The Bible, have you read Hebrews? Is it Hebrews 12, 12, 12, 3? The Bible says, have you resisted sin to the point of blood? Oh, some of you think something just overpowered. Give me that scripture. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. You must be righteously strict on yourself. Don't, don't let anybody give you this spaghetti Christianity. Are we together? Even for Jesus, was that how he lived this life? The Bible says in Luke 21, 37, give me that scripture. The Bible says day after day, he was preaching in the temple. But at night, he goes to the Mount of Olives, symbolic of the anointing, and begins to pray. He goes there and begins to pray. That's Jesus. You say, no, you don't need all these things. Whenever you want to manifest, you just call his name. And it moves around you. Don't tell yourself. We live under heightened level of consecrations. Since I started to minister, before I suspended going outside for ministration, I have never gone for a ministration and ate. That's my concentration. The Lord, when I appear before people, show yourself in a way they've never seen before. How many of you have followed me for external meetings? You see wonders. You even be confused. Is it the same man I used to see? If you keep me there five days, I only take water. Five days. That's my consecration. That's how he said, if you do this, I will continue to show up on you. See, listen, the fathers lived lives of consecrations and vows. They knew how to make vows to God. Oh God, if you do this, the Bible says, and Jacob, after he had an encounter on his way of escape from his brother's anger and rout, he said to himself, Oh my God, if you will bring me back here safely with my family, I will give a tithe all that I've got him. It was on basis of vows. This is how they lived their life. Have you not read the book of Psalms? chapter 1 to the end, all you keep here is I will pay my vows in the congregation of his people. I will pay my vows one of the men that opened me heightenedly into the realms of vows was a great man of God, Pastor Benny here. I was struggling one time I needed money seriously at that point in time. I was doing my master's program. I needed to pay three different school fees. They wanted to rush us so pay two at once. The money was not there. I was stranded confused what do i do and suddenly i just saw one of his clip popped up while i was browsing through the net and he was giving a story of the midst of vow and he talked about how his father ozzled and looked for um, a scholarship of Israel that to travel out of israel to the u.s for years they didn't offer it to him then he went to church one day and hear the pastor saying oh we need a bottle of oil he said to him say young boy he said oh god if you give my dad visa i'll give you oil and within a few days, they just called the dad and said, your visa is ready, pra, pra, pra. and he forgot. Why did they end up? He said, God said to him, Benny, where is my all? You know, most of you are why why you? When you want to make vows, you cry. You cry. Is that not say, Lord, if you give me this anointing, I will be extremely humble. You are the one blocking people's number now. They are disturbing me because of the grace. But 
You remember when you were praying in prayer streets? You, you remember you will sing, you play. You know, most of you use it. The lead guitar. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy. And you were playing that and playing that, and God was I know you. It's time to say, I pledge allegiance to the land. With all God said, I know you. I know you. It's okay, okay. Take. Now you are the one who said, This meeting is. My grace is bigger than them. An insult for them to invite me to such a place. Are we following? They were men of consecration. Listen, if I am if I want to now, my children know me. I can stir up any reality I am enjoying, any reality of the spirit I'm enjoying. I can stir it up at will. That stress and struggle, even if you wake me from sleep, you know how why it happens that way. It's from the basis of my consecrations. Have you not seen the way I? You don't know it's the basis of a consecration where you see me say, "God of my fathers, why do you think I make summons on that?" There is a consecration in there. Are we together? That's why he can show up like that. He said, son, this is our agreement from today. As long as you decide to do this, I will keep showing up like this. I will keep showing up like this. Your consecrations. Are we following? For Samson, his hair was not to see razor. He was not to take strong drink. Are you saying you have no specific instruction in your work with God? Even for your academics, he didn't say anything to you and say, if you would just go this way, then leave the academics to me. You're having a terrible Christian walk. That's not how they walked with God. Let's stop at any point we can. Number five, they live the life of consistent prayers. Second Chronicles 14 and verse 7. Second Chronicles 15, 4 and verse 7. And, um, Second Chronicles 26 verse 5, Second Chronicles 33 verse 12, Second Chronicles 26 verse 5 said, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, the high priest. This, it was their lifestyle. Psalms 34 and verse 4 and Psalm 72 and verse 2. Number 6, they sought God's counsel per time and was consistently led by him. They did nothing without talking to God first about it. Uh, listen, Samuel chapter 30, Samuel 30, the Bible says, and David came back from battle. He found him and his men. Their wives had been taken. Their children had been taken into captivity and their camp and houses burned down. If it was, what was your reaction? Gather the army, let's go after them. The Bible says he still had time to be patient enough to still ask, should I pursue? Should I overtake? Will I defeat them? Should that be a question in such kind of situation? But this is how they live their lives. I taught my children something some few days back. I said the Bible says in Luke, the Bible says, seeing a king who wants to go at war, he first sits down and counts the cost. So how I know your kingly standing is in the midst of threatening situation. The first thing you do is not react. You sit down and receive counsel. Number seven. Number seven. They understood God. Number eight. They loved God more than others did. Rise up to your feet. They loved God more than others did. The true proof of your love for God is obedience and sacrifice. What are you willing to let go for God and His kingdom? Some of you see. Listen, you are just assuming you love God. The reason why you are serious now. Is because you are suffering. I'm serious. You let God bless some of you now that you can drop a million years offering. I will be greeting you when you come to church. By the time you stay, I'll say, Tell Papa to come and welcome me in. Ah, no, you are saying I'm lying. Just the small phone you bought, you are waiting to charge it small to 10, 30% before you come to church. Because you know, when you go back, GK, they won't give you light. So you delay service time, small phone that is even operating itself and you say you love God the Bible says if you love me you will obey my commandment 
2, the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. The proof of love is given. What have you let go for God and his kingdom? I was on scholarship, MTM scholarship for four years. Everything I dropped it on the altar. Everything. Second Samuel 24, 24. David said, I will never give God what will cost me nothing. Are we following tonight? What are you willing to let go? Anything you have not given is still superior than you. Listen. <laughs> Anything you have not given is bigger than you. There are things that can never move me. Are we following? I lost millions of naira during the break. I didn't cry. I'm still standing. You is 500 when you're coming to church. You have walked that three times. In broad daylight, you are using torchlight. 500 naira. I won't trade you for silver nor gold. I won't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my everything. Oh, you are, you are my everything. What's the proof of your love for him? They don't check any man mindfully by God. First King 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, And Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. First Chronicles 29 and verse 3 to 9. The Bible says that to David, You can't build my house because your hands are soiled with blood. Look at what David was saying there. First Chronicles 29 3. The Bible says, David said, I have given for the house of God everything that is needed he gave far above the whole elders of Israel if it was you God said don't worry my son your hands are soiled with blood I won't want you to be doing I say thank you you are the one doing what no man can do <laughs> that's what you would have said he said though I can't build it but there are still other things I can do I might not be strong in the place of prayer to move the advancement of God's work, but I can give my finances. I might not have the money, but I can give my skill. I can give my talents. I can give. That's why when the Bible says no one should appear before him empty-handed, what he knows is telling you that I've given you something. The problem there is that you interpreted that script. Your skill is there to appear before him with. Your prayers are there to appear before him with. Your time is there. He said, no one should appear before me and handed. Because he knows you have something to give. Wake up. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and 1 verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, but in the latter days, perilous times shall abound. Not become lovers of themselves. Treacherous. Disobedience to, to parents. Are some of you not like that now? Just small, small under K that hand, enter your hand. You are put on your status. You must learn how to reduce your inner circle. Don't worry, you still be a dot. By the time you turn back, you find that you are the one there. Then you understand the Christ is first. Warn to him that stand alone. For when he falls, he has no one to lift him up. Then you also understand that in certain seasons just like joseph and the butler you and your destiny helper can be in the same condition as you the pro-sightedness our inability to discern a king at infancy and present before him gold fragrances and mere that's why they call them wise men the ability to see what others cannot see do you love the lord do you love the lord how far can you go for him? How far? You drop an offering of 10 naira. Then when you get back home now, you recharge 5k data. You say you love the Lord? Is, is that how you show it? Loving God is not a statement. It's an action. Are we together? They loved God. Not. I have checked the lives of others. The things they were willing to do for God's kingdom. I remember the last, was it last two or three shilos? I was following the broadcast. 
and how that that they are the oh, oh, yeah, the boss said he said there are about 10,000 churches in the rural areas he said I personally want to build 1,000 I shouted Jesus one man he is offering basket they say you should buy no, the one is already breaking everywhere Malachi chapter 1 and verse 5 says, can you give me that scripture? The Bible says, it says, how will you be accepted when you bring sick goats with one leg? Blind goats. He said, if you give them, <laughs> will they accept? Lift up your hands and say something wonderful to me. This is why God showed up for them. This is why they could do terrible things in righteousness. They could rot wonders in their days and times wake up from this lukewarm christianity challenge yourself challenge yourself i will walk the world listen the god i know does no business with unserious people are we following i, I read i read a book by aw toza that changed my life he said if you want to have god you can't spend all your time with people I'm shocked we are on mystery of praying without season I was confused. How do these men do these things? And they say they, they pray without. How? Or a robot was asked the same question. Paul Young Cho was asked, What's your schedule like? He said, My schedule daily is tongues interrupted by other things. Just obey each other says pray without season. So I began to dissect into it. Lord, how do men pray? Do you want me to teach you? The Bible says in Ephesians 3 verse 20. The Bible says that God is able to do far above exceedingly more than what you want. Ask or you want. Think. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 8. It says whatsoever things is true. Whatsoever things is lovely, noble, worthy of praise, of good report. Think on these things. So your thoughts are prayers. What did I say again? Your thoughts are prayers. So how do I pray? Because I must be in the place of Rasha Kapada. When I think on what I want him to do for me. That's why he said in Isaiah. He said there is a level of work you get with God. He said before you speak, I will answer. Why you are yet speaking, I will do. I will grant the desires of your heart, not your prayers. So as I have that desire, I say, Lord, I want you to move mind in this way. In my mind, even while I'm still talking with you. Is a prayer. That's how I pray without ceasing. Lift up your hands and say something wonderful. Thank him tonight. Thank him. Pray one prayer and say, Lord, baptize me with love for you. Let my love for you not was cold. If you genuinely love this God, he will make your life a wonder on the earth. Let my love for you not was cold. Baptize me with a fire of love for you. Raise your voice and pray. Raise your voice and pray. Shate kapalando soko tebele kahaida. E baba be kabom be 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 lele kuzahata bina. Abruze kakalobon shate te namanaka. Ipo be 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 be. Rata ba shata kabaya. Ipo be 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 in Jesus name we've prayed while I was in the campus and I had a perception of all the things that God wanted to do through my life while in this land some of you have heard my story while I was here great and mighty things God did through me in the city when God said that to me I simply asked him what's my consecration and he said to me son May food not enter your mouth until 12 noon till you leave the campus. That's how I live my life here. That's how I live my life. That was my consecration. And I saw terrible things in righteousness. My sister, my daughter, while I was in the campus, there are meetings I step into like these people are flying out of this place into bushes. Terrible things in righteousness. But it was sponsored. In fact, they used to, they used to yard me that I take. Is it, um, raw egg sometimes I don't eat I just take that I put I just had one inclination in my mind that says that is perfect nutrients 
egg is one full chicken. Yogurt is milk. So I just went, take it like that. We had that times I broke down many times. But I stood up and knew there were things that he wants to do with my life. One hour every night, to me praying my personal prayer. I didn't build my life with our prayer meetings like some of you do. Or build our, my, my study life with Bible study. No. That's why I'm a living Bible. Are we together? It was my personal decision. There are consecrations and instructions God will give you. The reason why I'm still standing to date irrespective of all the battles I've faced and all the oppositions here and there is because of certain consecrations. God said, just do this and I'll make this happen. I pray for you tonight. Whatever instruction you need for the next phase of your life, whatever instruction you need to push you into that realm of destiny you want to get into, may your ears be open to hear them from today. May your eyes be open to see them. And may your heart be open to perceive them. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I declare every areas of your life you have struggled every areas of your life you have been diseased you have been at a state of uneasiness i pray and i decree may healing come for you in the name of jesus christ may healing come for you in the name of jesus christ whatever body you came into this house with tonight i command it to be lifted up you are seeking your body i release healing upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the troubles of your heart receive the answers from above. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his content on you. The Lord grant you his peace. In the name of Jesus. May this week bring you favor. 